So let's look at the next type of lesion, which is known as recurrent aplastomatitis stomatitis, or RAS. And the you know, layman's term for this is canker sores. So uh, what causes canker sores? Well, here is his unknown ideology, but for those of us that do get canker sore, it could be trauma, right? If we slip our toothbrush in the mouth and, you know, it could cause that. Um, if we are, you know, undergoing a lot of stress, sometimes, you know, you could get that, although you get cold sores more often when you are um, under a lot of stress. So the textbook says that we really don't know. It's unknown. There's unknown causes of why this actually happens. But just know that aptus um, stomatitis is for canker sores. And when someone gets canker sore, there are corticosteroids that we give them to treat. Okay, And these here are a list of different types of steroids that could be given to them to help treat those canker sores or aptus stomatitis. Some people even call it aptus ulcers. Okay, so again, we see lots of different medications that are used to treat canker sores. Lichen planus, so this is another one, or lichen planus. Um, it's basically a uh, white uh, lace-like pattern type of lesion. Um, when, it's, when, we, when it's a lace type, sorry, lace-like pattern, we say it's hypertrophic. That's how we identify the lace-like pattern. So is there pain? It depends. Sometimes people will have this and have no pain. And sometimes people will be in extreme pain, especially if this is a lot more significant. I had a client who had this and, um, you know, we sent them to the oral pathologist and the oral pathologist said that it always comes up when he is sick. So if he is immunosuppressed or sick, this is when it would come up, the lichen planus. And so that's one reason why um, this can happen when they're um, sick, when they're immunosuppressed, uh, this can happen. So, but the textbook says that the ideology is unknown. So people think they have hypothesis that it could be because of a viral infection, it could be because of an autoimmune disease, it could be because they're hypersensitive to um, you know something that maybe like a mouth rinse or a toothpaste that causes this. Um, and in my case, uh, the client had it because he was getting sick a lot. So there's it's unknown. We don't really know why, but um, maybe we could by asking them a few questions, we could figure out what causes it. We could, if it happens often, we could ask them the right questions to see what causes it. Geographic tongue. So this is like a map-like. They say geographic because it has like a map-like feature on the tongue. It's basically they have white patches or white centers, and then usually it's surrounded by redness. So erythema is redness. Okay, So when you have some intense red areas in the tongue with white patches. This is painful, it causes burning. Okay, they always say that it's really bur it's burning. And so what you treat it, we just tell them, please don't you know, eat spicy or irritating food and avoid alcohol. Because hopefully over time, these can disappear for some people. And here's another one, burning mouth or tongue syndrome. When the mouth, just it's very, um, in, I shouldn't say inflamed, but uh, it burns. And sometimes when they'll say that their mouth is burning and when you look inside their mouth, it looks fine, it, it looks a it, the oral cavity is completely normal, but they tell you, no, they're in so much discomfort. They're in a lot of pain. They're experiencing um, burning sensation. So again, we don't know why, but to treat it, if, sometimes people say maybe they're lacking vitamins, so to give them vitamins to treat that. Um, maybe we need to give them um, an antifungal switch to treat it. So again, we don't know, but the dentist will ask the, the client some questions and then decide how to treat it. It's also been called, um, called glossodynia or glossopyrosis, and so, um, sorry, glossodynia. Uh, dynia comes from the word pain, and glosso comes from tongue, so painful tongue, and glossopyrosis. Pyrosis means burn, so burning tongue, because glosso is tongue. Pericornitis. So this is um, when you have your third molar come in or erupt and it's partially erupted. So when you have partially erupted third molar, so it's not fully erupted, and you have this extra flap of gum sticking out, that extra flap, by the way, is known as the operculum. So the operculum is that extra flap. And let's say you have food and bacteria stuck in there. It can cause this gum to get inflamed. And when the gum gets inflamed and maybe even painful, it's called pericornitis. Okay? So this happens around partially erupted third molars. Remember, itis means inflammation, 
Okay, peri means around, and coron maybe comes from the crown, so around the crown of the third molar. That's when we would see uh, the inflammation. So how do we treat it? We would usually um, debridement with saline irrigation. So that means you're going to clean that area out, take out all the food and bacteria inside there, use an instrument and remove it, and then um, irrigate the area with water. So there are syringes, the big um, syringes called monojet, that you could flush in that area and wash everything up and clean that area off. Recommend warm salt water rinses, uh, pain medication, and if it's really, really infected, then we might need to um, give them antibiotics. Post-radiation um, post caries or post-irradiation caries. If people go through radiation because of cancer, especially if the radiation is around the head and neck area, their saliva will get affected. The saliva will decrease significantly. And it, it has this weird, um, thick and dry uh, saliva that they have. And so because when you have no saliva in the mouth, you're probably prone to dental caries. And typically, people who have radiation um, in the head and neck area, they, they, their mouth is you know, pretty badly, or their teeth rather, is pretty badly decayed because of the lack of saliva. So you want to make sure they come every three months, right? So the recall appointments is more often every three months. Get them to do really, really good oral hygiene, brushing, flossing religiously. Um, and we usually give them fluoride gel because fluoride helps with cavities. So we'll tell them to take it four times daily. And um, there are ways you'll learn in other classes of how to do that. But you would make a bite guard for them or a guard for them and tell them to put the gel, the fluoride gel in it, and take it four times a day because their, their teeth can get really affected with cavities. When you have recession, so your gums go down, what can happen is that the, this area over here will become very sensitive. So people who have generalized gum recession will have sensitivity or will experience sensitivity or have sensitive teeth. And so to treat this, what you'll learn in other classes too is that one way to treat it is by giving them fluoride because fluoride doesn't only help with cavities, it also helps with um, sensitivity. Sometimes we'll give them a tray and tell them to put fluoride in the tray and then you know treat it that way because again fluoride is really good. Then there are toothpastes that can also help like sensodyne. Okay, let's look at actinic lip changes. Actinic lip changes. So this is where um, when someone is out in the sun a lot and they don't protect their lips, you know, with that, uh, you should protect your lips with sunblock or lip balm. What happens is um, they, their lips can get really crusted. And this happens because of long-term exposure of the lip to the sun. So to treat it, or actually to prevent it, we always should go out with lip balm that, has, um, that is sunproof or sunblock. And this is a medication used to treat it, which is called, it's, it's a really weird name, but it's called, um, it has a number five in front of it. So five fluorocell. And it's also known as I, uh, 5FU, right? So it has this symbol, uh, these letters in front of it. And what this medication does is it basically promotes sloughing. So sometimes people have extra crust or extra layers in front, and they'll, um, the, if you take this medication, it will just slough off or remove that extra skin just to make it more comfortable. Okay. So stomatitis is inflammation. And the inflammation could be, in this case, the roof or floor of the mouth. So here, the roof of the mouth. What causes it? So many conditions that can cause it. Poor oral hygiene. If they had denture in this area and it's not fitting properly, you could get stomatitis. Um, you could get it from hot food or hot drink, and that could burn that area. It could be because of an allergic reaction. It could be because of radiation therapy. So there's many reasons why this could happen. And so treatment is figuring out what causes it. And then once you figure out what causes it, then we can prevent it. Um, if it's poorly fitted dentures, then we're going to fix that denture. Um, if it's, you know, from hot food or drink, then we're going to avoid hot food and drink. So it depends on what is causing it. Xerostomia. So as you guys know, xerostomia is a um, one of the biggest side effects that we see with drugs. Dry mouth, right? 
And so the medication to treat that is pilocarpine, as you guys have learned before. So this is a medication that induces saliva. We also want to make sure that we teach them about, you know, caries prevention, so keeping their mouth clean, uh, brushing, flossing religiously to prevent any cavities. The next one we're going to look at is called sialuria. And this is um, also known as sialosis, um, sialism, sialuria. And think of, when I look at these four letters, I think of saliva this kind of comes from those uh, the letters there and so what this means is that there's an increase in saliva people there's more saliva in their mouth and why would someone get that well maybe they're in this medication pilocarpine that causes a lot of saliva and that's what's causing that increase or that drooling or that increased saliva so when anyone is taking a drug we need to be mindful of looking at um, lesions inside their mouth because it can cause a lot of hypersensitivity reaction. People could be extremely sensitive to the drug and it appears in their mouth. So look for lesions in the mouth that is caused, um, that could be caused by them taking a, a particular drug. And this medication over here is called hydrochlorothiazide, also known as HT, HCTZ. And just know for the test that if someone is taking this medication, it can cause some lesions, and in particular, it can cause, um, another word for this is like lichen planus or lichen planus um, type of lesions. Okay, so you can get lichen planus type of lesions with this, which HCTZ medication. Stains is very common with some medications. So as we know, we take tetracycline or aminocycline, because um, they both come from the same family, uh, it can cause stains in their teeth, and these are permanent. And then we could even get chlorhexidine stains. So chlorhexidine is a, is a mouth rinse that we give to people that are having, um, you know, severe uh, inflammation or infection in their mouth. We'll give them chlorhexidine rinse. And the sad part is that chlorhexidine, while it will help the gums get healthy, it may cause staining like this. The good thing is this is removable, so we could use our piezo, we could use our cabbage on and actually, um, you know, remove it. We could polish it off as well. So it is um, reversible. This, however, the tetracycline or aminocycline stain is irreversible. Okay, gingival enlargement. So we kind of touched on this um, before. Uh, what's, we, you may have heard of these two or these um phenytoin and calcium channel blockers. You may have heard of those medications before. So let's look at this. When we have too much gums, gingival enlargement could be caused because of a medication that we're taking. And perhaps one of the reasons why this is happening is because maybe this client is taking phenytoin or dilantin. And this is a medication used for seizures. So if he or she is seizing, uh, you know, or prone to getting seizures, then this is the medication that's prescribed and that can cause gingival enlargement. Cyclosporin, this is a drug that is used for transplant. So let's say I got a kidney transplant or so someone gave me a kidney. The doctor will give me cyclosporin so that my body accepts that kidney because it's someone else's kidney. And when you get someone else's stuff put inside your body, um, your body fights it. It won't accept it. So to make, to trick the body to think that the kidney is mine and to, to prevent it from rejecting the kidney, the doctor will give me cyclosporin. So this is used for drug, tra uh, for lung transplant, for kidney transplant, for any type of transplant. Cyclosporin is a medication given and it can cause, unfortunately, gingival enlargement. The last medication that can cause gingival enlargement is calcium channel blockers. And calcium channel blockers are used for high blood pressure. So if people have heart disease or high blood pressure, this is a medication that could be prescribed to them. And sadly, the side effect is gingival enlargement. There are other drugs over here as well, but these are the three main ones that you should really know that causes gingival enlargement. Osteonecrosis of the jaw, so this is, this is really sad. This is when you don't get, have enough blood flow in this area and you get necrosis or, or like the eating away of the um, bone. And, um, the best way to, you know, treat it is to give them, like, you know, pr proper rinses, antibiotics, a pain relieving medication. And what we've noticed is that, um, though it's not, it's, it's uh, not doesn't happen all the time, but some people who do take this medication over here, bisphosphonate, 
this is what can happen as a side effect. And just as an FYI, this medication, biphosphonate, is used to treat um, constipation. So when if you take this medication, you're at risk for osteonecrosis of the jaw. And so if this happens, they may have to go through um, jaw surgery where they um, implant you know, a new jaw. So usually when people have oral lesions, we treat it with corticosteroids. Okay, especially if there's an inflammation or if there's an immune response, it's treated with corticosteroids. The uh, medication could be topical, so it could be a cream, or it could be systemic, where like prednisone, where they're swallowing it. So systemic is something that you that enters the body. Topical is like a cream that you just put on top of the lesion. So to end, it's important to know that we should offer um, palliative treatment or treatment that makes the client feel more comfortable. And so we can do that by giving them topical agents. So like cream, for example, for the lesion, or um, giving them something like chlorhexidine to swish around in their mouth to help um, eliminate that inflammation and that pain that they have in their mouth. Or we could recommend um, analgesics, a medication, a systemic medication, a medication that they swallow to um, provide relief from that painful oral lesion. So we wanna make it very comfortable for them. Okay, so comfort is important.